This is the Commodore Vanderbilt from Broadway Limited Imports. After its initial reveal from Broadway Limited back in 2015, it is now finally here eight years later in 2023. Unlike the initial release, which was to be a lettered and unlettered version, BLI has released five versions of this model, those being the as delivered with spoke wheels, the later with disc drivers, both lettered and unlettered, and finally two fantasy paint schemes exclusive to Train World, those being the New York Central Pacemaker scheme with a white and black NYC logo on the tender. For this review, I'm going to be looking at both the original spoke driver and disc driver. With that, let's look into the history of the Commodore Vanderbilt. So what makes the Commodore Vanderbilt so special? To start off, the Commodore Vanderbilt is a 464 Hudson for the New York Central Railroad, number 5344, and was the NYC's first attempt at streamlining a locomotive. The locomotive was shrouded in a sheet metal with the design from the Case Institute of Technology. The locomotive is named after the founder of the NYC, Cornelius Vanderbilt, who was sometimes referred to as Commodore Vanderbilt. On its initial debut, on February 19, 1935, at the Grand Central Station in New York, it would go on a tour on the NYC's route to Chicago, where then after, the locomotive would be used on the 20th Century Limited. In July of 1939, the locomotive would receive its disc drivers to improve performance, along with other modifications. In July of 1939, it would have its shrouding removed and receive the same streamlining as the J3 Hudson's. It would remain this way till its withdrawal, February 14, 1957, and then scrapped. To start off, the locomotive comes in a white color box that slides out of the sleeve from either the left or the right side. Inside the locomotive is in a clear plastic holding that can be opened by sliding the clear plastic sleeve out. Then it is simply popping out the tab and removing the side plates to access the model. Overall, this will keep the locomotive nice and secure. Including the box are the extra pieces for display, those being the side sheathing in the front of the in front of the pilot wheels and a rear truck for display. If you are wondering what the difference between the trucks is, the one already installed has the top half taken off in order for the locomotive to handle tight curves. There is also a funnel for smoke fluid and a screwdriver with extra traction tires. The locomotive itself is made mostly of die cast, painted in the gunmetal gray with some silver lining as per the prototype. The extra feature to note is the slight warp on the metal sheets above the wheels giving it that realistic feel. The Commodore Vanderbilt is printed nicely on both sides and there is no number printed anywhere on the locomotive the same as the prototype. The front of the locomotive features the headlight with rivet detail around it, a handrail on the bottom, and a printed plaque with New York Central lines on the spoke drivers and New York Central system on the disc drivers. One thing to note that has been pointed out is that the front of the locomotive looks much narrower compared to the original, and I want to say after some looking carefully and looking at research as some photos, yes, the top is much narrower. As for the wheels of the locomotives, the early version features the spoke driver wheels, while the later version features disc drivers. The spoke version is painted black with a white outline. The side rods are what you would see on any basic NYC Hudson. The disc drivers feature the same paint scheme, but with the wheels look lower like a solid disc with some holes, hence the name, and the side rods are a little bigger with roller bearings. Both the leading and trailing trucks feature the same paint scheme on both locomotives. As a side note, I do not understand why manufacturers, besides Bachmann, paint the axle in the center, considering the price you pay. The top of the locomotive is mostly smooth with some modeled and separately applied details, such as the bell, whistle, and the safety valves. There is also a smokestack for the smoke unit, and in the back we have the cab of the locomotive. That has quite a few details. The cab features factory installed crew figures, a molded back head, but all in one color, a cab light, and three movable hatches on the top, though the middle one will expose the cab light wire. The tender consists of a molded hatch with rivet detail all along the entire body. The New York Central is printed nicely on the t both sides of the locomotive. The front of the tender, behind the cab, features molded detail representing hatches and doors. In the back has the rear headlight, handrails, a ladder, brake work, and printed capacity numbers. As a side note, if you want to run a loco with these side pieces, you'll have to use wide curves, otherwise the loco will either derail or push them off. The locomotive is factory installed with BLI's Paragon 4 system with a variety of sounds. 
While it may not be the greatest sounding system compared to other brands, it's still decent to listen to. For this video, I'm only going to play the whistle and bell options, as you'll mostly be using those compared to other sounds. A final note, the Loco features a go-pack, which gives the locomotive roughly 4 seconds of power over dead zones. Now, I have here some heavyweight NYC coaches from the Vanderbilt to show off some quick run-bys of the locomotive.
Overall, I'm very happy with this model, and if you're currently looking for a Vanderbilt, I'd recommend this one. While it has some slight imperfections, your only other option is to hopefully snag a brass model. But be advised, as you may or may not have to paint one, and will also have to wire it for DCC if that's what you are using. As for me, I'm content with these, as I'm a sucker for streamliners, and if you are the same as me, you won't want to miss out on this model. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.